Making an OTDR measurement. With regards to the divisor OTDRs, the OTDR user interface of the AE1000, AE2200, and the AE3100 is almost identical. The main difference is the screen size. While the AE1000 and the 2200 both use the 5 inch screen, the AE3100 has a significantly larger 8 inch diameter screen. Be sure and clean all fiber connectors before plugging into your fiber optic test equipment and bulkhead devices. Please watch the cleaning and connectors video for more information. Now that you have your connectors plugged into your OTDR, press the green start button to start capturing the trace. You will first see the OTDR test your connector surface, which should appear as green on the lower bar marked as good. Depending on your settings, the OTDR will typically take around 30 seconds to capture a measurement trace. Essentially, this green trace represents the magnitude and approximate location of reflections and events over the length of the optical fiber. In this example, two wavelengths are being tested right after each other, 1550 nanometers and 1310. Now you will notice, as it repeats, what appears to be the same measurement, but it is now in fact measuring the 1310 nanometer wavelength. In this example, you will see two traces on the same screen, and you will be able to toggle these two wavelengths with the button on the side. Also, I wanted to point out that as you wait for this trace capture to complete, you might ask the question, why can't we immediately take a snapshot and display it? The answer is because most OTDRs would capture too much noise in a single trace. The solution is to capture many traces over a longer period of time and then average them to display a smoother, cleaner trace as it averages out all the irregularities. Notice now that the trace has been captured. The events are now marked and the details are displayed in the event table below. Located around the trace are readings and tools to help you analyze these measurements. Let's take a closer look at these different parts of the screen. Trace Overview. This shows a small thumbnail of the overall trace. The area currently being viewed in the main trace window is indicated by a light gray shadow. User specified measurement settings, which includes the optical return loss between the left and right hand markers, as well as the distance between them. If you were viewing a save trace, you would see different information here that includes the trace name, wavelength, pulse, index of refraction, and the direction of the test. Let's look at the top right. This section shows the LSA, the least squares attenuation, and the 2.4 point readings for loss and slope. Tap the loss or the slope icon to quickly and easily change measurement settings. Loss readings are in dB, slope readings are in dB per kilometer. On the right hand side, you will find the main menu functions, including the start button, which begins the measurement, setup, file, and operate. On the main trace, two markers labeled L and R can be used to analyze the measurement at specific points. These indications show the measurement distance, also called the fiber length, total loss, and average loss readings. When the file icon is selected, then this toolbar appears. The folder key allows you to view and retrieve files saved in its folders. Below that icon is the save icon, which automatically saves and names a trace. The lower setup icon contains the file naming rules as well as the directory where autosave will place a file. When the operate icon is selected, then a new toolbar appears which allows you to narrow down the view of the trace by zooming in or out on a particular region of the trace. The top two icons change the vertical scale, while the next two change the horizontal scale. The one-to-one -one ratio icon restores the trace to its original view. The hand or pan icon allows you to move the position of the trace up or down on the screen. With the free zoom icon, you can select a window over the trace to zoom into the selected area. Keeping your finger or stylus on the screen, 
Drag diagonally to create a rectangle that encloses the area that you wish to examine. The panel will resize to capture that exact region. When finished, tap the one-to-one -one zoom to restore the default trace sphere. When the cursor icon is selected, you can click on the left or right cursor. When highlighted, you will be able to move the cursor by clicking on the screen or manually moving the marker with the arrow. You can select both the left and the right if you want to keep the markers spaced together. The default mode is two-point mode. If you click on the top right and change this to four-point mode, then you will have four cursors, uppercase A and B and lowercase A and B. Trace icon. If you used auto test and did both the 1310 and 1550 nanometer wavelength tests, then you will be able to toggle between them by toggling these two icons. Table icon. If you click on the table icon on the bottom right, it will give you three icons to give you different ways of viewing the table. The partial table icon will show five events below the screen. You can tap on an individual event in the table to move the marker on the trace. The full table icon shows you all the events without the trace. The single event icon will show just the event where the active marker is pointing. Event icon. This icon is for adding a new event or deleting an unwanted event. To add an event, move your marker to the new event location and click on the positive green button. To delete an event, move your cursor to an unwanted event and press the negative red button. This event will be removed from the event table. Thank you for watching the OTDR measurement tutorial.